saying things people already know out loud is tight. Avada Kedavra. You park in front of your house, I park in front of my house. We're here to learn, so we'll move on. What's up, everyone? It's Adam from FWCI. There is a new trailer for The Flash, and this movie is quite a weird and unusual circumstance because DC is just scrapping projects left, right, and center, and The Flash is connected with Ezra Miller, who has had a lot of controversy lately. Not just the drunken violence, but there have been some other allegations towards him that are pretty unsettling as well. And they're still pushing forward with this movie, which makes me think that this is a very wide-spanning and uh, cameo-filled movie. I think that DC has just put so much into this so far that even with all the craziness with Ezra Miller, this movie is still going to be, uh, like, it's going to, it's got to be their response to, um, Spider-Man No Way Home. That's what I'm expecting the Flash movie to be. It's not common that I'm excited for a DC movie, but this one has definitely piqued my interest, and we already know Michael Keaton is going to be a part of it. By the way, hang around after the uh, reaction as well, because I'm going to be talking about the DC universe in full. I'll probably upload that in a separate video as well, but I definitely want to talk about the DC universe in general. But let's check out the Flash official trailer. Tell me something. You can go anywhere. Another timeline. Another universe. Mm. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Yeah, that sounds like Michael Keaton. Is he Bruce Wayne from the Burton verse, or is he going to be a version of? Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's dad, in the Flashpoint Paradox. That's who we end up meeting, you know? Like, is that where this is going? Because this is the world where my mom lives. I'm not gonna lose her again. Time has a pattern that it can't help reliving. Different people different worlds drawn to each other like magnets okay oh all right so yeah this is gonna be full-blown multiverse I, I think we've already seen that there's gonna be multiple flashes but this is i think the first look that we're getting at it my face so my face if you were to go into the past yeah. You have no idea what the consequences can be. Bruce, I could fix things. You could also... Oh my god, I knew it! I fucking knew it! There are gonna be so many cameos in this! Holy shit, although he is from the same universe, technically, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got even more. Destroy everything. This can't be happening. I completely broke the universe. Sorry. We've been waiting for you. What? Yo! <laughs> no metahumans. And now there's no one to defend us. Want some help? Oh, it is gonna be Bruce! Oh, oh my god. Yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Alright, hold on. We still got like a minute of this left. So far from what I'm seeing, they are doing this right. They're doing it right. They took a, a big leaf out of No Way Home's book and they are doing this right. Let's bring all these universes back together. This is amazing. I can't do Superman! What? He's gonna be in action! There might not be a future. Hang on a second, we just see the flash shooting lasers out of his eyes. Oh, we're going back to have a look at this. What's the play? Batman, what do we do? We try not to die. What is this? It's 
It's not Quark. My name is Kara. I'm, I'm Barry. Or Barry. <laughs> wow. Bringing Supergirl into this? What? Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are gonna wanna see this. Hey, Barry, yeah, take the picture. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's uh, quite the trailer. That's why Ezra Miller's bullshit is being tolerated at the moment because they've got Ben Affleck, they've got Michael Keaton, they're introducing Supergirl, they're bringing back Zod. Holy crap! Yeah, good work. This this needs to be the this should be the finale of that DC. Uh, extended universe. I know they've got Shazam coming. Is that, I think that comes out before the Flash. They need to just make this one the last one because that is such a great way for that franchise to to go out with something that brings all their their shit together in that way. So it was a hell of a trailer. DC, unfortunate for you <laughs> when your entire um, empire is like collapsing and needing to be rebuilt. Uh, you come out with a awesome, awesome looking movie. I mean, let's see what it looks like on delivery. Of course, that's the other side of this. But yeah, that was that was epic. But what I'm gonna do right now is tell you guys how I would reboot the DC universe. I love the DC universe, I love the main characters. I'm not as familiar with the um, outer universe as I am with Marvel now, a lot because of the uh, the movies and the action figure collection and everything like that. But I still grew up on DC. I have a very uh, sentimental attachment to it. But let's talk about what James Gunn has already got planned. He's announced a few things. I'm familiar with some of these properties, some I'm not, but uh, we've got Creature Commandos, I, not something I've ever really uh, indulged in. Walla is gonna be a TV series, which I'm very excited for. Superman Legacy, The Lanterns TV series is supposed to be like a true detective style show, which is quite interesting. The Authority, another one I'm not that familiar with. Paradise Lost, doesn't ring a bell. Batman the Brave and the Bold, uh, yeah, very curious to see what they do with Damian Wayne in that one. That's that's an interesting place to start that uh, character, especially in a big shared universe like the one we have. Uh, there's going to be a sequel to that. Booster Gold, which I, I know of Booster Gold. I know he's a comedy character, but I'm not really that familiar with that character. But with James Gunn at the helm, that one could be very interesting. Uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing. So some interesting uh, titles in there. I'm sure there are going to be additions to that and changes and everything like that. But uh, quite an interesting lineup. And James Gunn, seeing what he did with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and even with uh, the Suicide Squad movie, um, the way he brought more characters into that, and, and did a pretty good job fleshing them out. I do think the current DC universe brings people in with not enough backstory. That's just my opinion. But I am curious to see how he introduces this whole new universe of characters uh, to the audience. I'm very excited for it. But let's talk about how I would book the DC universe. I don't know if book is the right word, but it's a wrestling term if you're going to book a show. This is how we're booking the DC universe during a reboot. I've got five properties, and the first one I'm going to break down into episodes because, well, you'll see why. But starting off with a six-part HBO series simply called universe. What I want to do in this um, introduction is introduce different corners of the DC universe. So let's talk about the episodes. Episode one, Gotham. We're introduced to Commissioner Gordon. We're introduced to the city of Gotham. A bunch of low-level criminals. And there's fleeting mentions of uh, Batman throughout. I, I would imagine we could even meet the Bruce Wayne, whoever is going to play Bruce Wayne. And by the way, I haven't tried to cast any of these characters at all because I just don't know enough about the current acting landscape to be able to do that well, <laughs> if that makes sense. But if we've already cast Batman, sure, let's have him, uh, let's have Bruce Wayne in episode one of Universe, which will be called Gotham. Episode two is called Themyscira. So centuries in the past, uh, we learn about a prophecy which ends up being Wonder Woman, that she would bring their people to the world and also protect the world, which is a big Justice League premonitions. So a, a lot of foreshadowing in that episode, the introduction to the uh, Amazonians on Themyscira, building a little bit of history and a little bit of backstory. And I figure it's one episode, you know, you can, you can cover quite a bit in that, you know, depending on how you kind of edit and everything. Episode three, Krypton. Now, I don't want to go to Krypton. I, I, I've never really liked Krypton. I want to see the story told through the lens of like earth scientists who are aware of the planet and are studying it. 
and maybe they get some information from their wrong. Maybe they get some information from their right. Their kind of theorizing and everything about Krypton could be either proven or debunked as the universe goes on. But I would love to get, again, an introduction to some more characters. And all of these episodes, this is a very, very loose sort of description. They would all obviously have an antagonist, some sort of plot, good writing, you know, character development. This is just a, a very vague sort of introduction as to how I would do it. But I, I really like the idea of... Of learning about just some science characters let's get some ground level characters in the dc universe that we can you know re refer back to like they did it perfectly in uh, spider-man far from home where they reference back to all the people that worked for the villains in tony stark's world like that i thought was a, a great touch and uh, i feel like doing this kind of thing could lay the groundwork for that kind of stuff moving forward episode four arkham so this is where batman's got the best lineup of villains let's just face it we're going to introduce the audience to a bunch of them in this episode or a couple of them anyway we're going to meet oswald cobblepot the riddler and rupert thorne and one other character we're going to meet um selena kyle which uh, i just thought of this idea uh she's insane she's in a straight jacket she's screaming i'm not catwoman i'm not catwoman let me out of here let me out of here and the the, the story throughout the episode is that she's just lost her mind and she's out of it and then at the very end, we see the real Catwoman, Selina Kyle, on a rooftop somewhere, which I think gives her a bit of a more of a sadistic edge than like the sort of anti-hero that she often plays. Like the fact that she would allow this woman to be incarcerated in an insane asylum because it means, you know, she can go about her business and do her crimes as it were. So I would introduce those characters in an Arkham episode. And obviously we get to go into Arkham Asylum as well, which... I would make a significant part of the DC universe uh, moving forward. Episode 5, LexCorp. Uh, we get to meet Lex Luthor and learn all about his motives. We find out that Lex just learned about a young man somewhere out in Kansas who seems to have superpowers. And this episode is an introduction to Lex Luthor and his obsession to find out, you know, what's going on with Superman. Who is this guy? Why is he so powerful? How can I use him? A, a real kind of um, character episode on Lex Luthor. I, I don't know who I'd like to play Lex Luthor. Again, it depends on the age of like everyone one but eh, i don't have much of a strong opinion on that brian cranston would he be good is that too obvious and in the big final episode episode six is called ocean we meet aquaman in the season finale which is a big 90 minute episode that introduces arthur curry and features a big action sequence which leaves arthur seeking out arkham asylum for information to help defeat black manta so for those familiar with the comics black manta did his time in arkham asylum and when aquaman goes to investigate this it causes him to meet batman face to face at the end probably just for a conversation and a little bit of information or something like that but it's gonna start introducing these heroes to each other that's like the big moment for the finale is we get batman and we get uh, aquaman in the same scene that's like you know one of the, the big money shots to end that series of universe which uh, that's how i would open the dc universe and then we just get into the movies and tv shows these won't be quite as fleshed out as the uh, the the universe idea that i've got but the next movie that I would have come out is Superman, um, an origin story that shows early 20s Clark Kent. This is like after like Smallville kind of thing. He knows he has um, uh, powers. He's still kind of hiding and uh, undercover. And uh, Lex Luthor, who we've already been introduced to, will send some people to try and get Clark Kent. And that's our introduction to that character. And the film ends with uh, Clark Kent kind of... Um, uh, reverse stalking Lex Luthor and getting his job at the Daily Planet in Metropolis. No Lois Lane in the first movie. It's purely Lex Luthor versus Clark Kent out in Kansas. And, uh, I, you know, I'd love to see that be a way to introduce this Superman character, especially if they're going to get a younger actor who's going to be around for a while. I'd like to see them take advantage of that and really start Superman off uh, early on in his run. Next, I would have a Wonder Woman TV show. Uh, this is very similar to what they're already going to do. This is an eight-part HBO series along the lines of Game of Thrones. I would also introduce the audience to Wonder Woman in this movie and uh, give get plenty of 
and get plenty of payoffs from the uh, Themyscira episode in universe. So a lot of that premonition stuff, I want to reward the audience for watching the TV shows, like all of them connected. I want there to be that connectivity between uh, all the properties. I think in this show, it would be a good idea to introduce um, Hal Jordan at the same time as well. Let's get the Green Lanterns in there. A little bit of an interaction between uh, him and Diana would be fantastic. Again, let's just start putting the, the, the connectivity out there and bring some of these characters into um, settings that we're now familiar with. Then I would have a Batman movie. You don't want to wait too long on putting out a Batman movie. Um, this would be the introduction of Batman into the DC universe. And he's going to face off with the trio of Penguin, Rupert Thorne, and Riddler. Who again, we set up in the universe show. A plan or something that they're going to hatch during that will obviously transfer over into the movie. And again, it's all about rewarding the audience for watching all the different properties and finding the way that they connect with each other. So we would also introduce, I think, Dick Grayson, not Robin yet, but just Dick Grayson into the story. Maybe not as a flying acrobat, but somehow we get him into the movie, I guess in a similar way to how they introduced um, Robin or whatever his name was, uh, the, the guy in um, the Dark Knight Rises, uh, Tommy Solomon from Third Rock from the Sun. I'd love to know Dick Grayson before he becomes Robin. And uh, so that's how I would do that. And the ending would include Aquaman helping Batman and creating a bit of a um, power dynamic between the two. A little bit of um, playfulness, but also, you know, the, that kind of competitive nature is in both of them as well. So I, again, I would build a little bit more between Aquaman and uh, Batman, especially if you go for a kind of comedic Aquaman character. If you can get an Aquaman that's good with jokes and a Batman that's good at being the straight man, that could be a really fun uh, dynamic between two big name characters. And lastly, very similar again to what they're already planning to do, the Lantern Corps HBO series looking like a true detective style TV show. I'd love to see it explore like the outer parts of the DC universe because we've learned from Marvel that finding out about all these other planets and worlds is a lot more palatable now I think than it was you know maybe 15 years ago so I want to see all the different worlds or at least a bunch of them and introduce in that series Darkseid and Apocalypse uh, so his home world of Apocalypse I mean not Apocalypse from Marvel that would not make any sense and I feel like at that point you've got a pretty good setup to move forward with some bigger stories like I feel like this is a great way to introduce the audience to people get the momentum going nice and quick, find out about some of the characters, see the world, see what the see what you're working with, see what the scope of everything is. And uh, that's how I would start the DC Universe. But let me know in the comments. Now, I'm sure that you probably think that this is a terrible idea, and that's absolutely fine, because to be honest, if Dwayne The Rock Johnson was sticking around, I would build the DC Universe around Black Adam. That's just me. <laughs> you can say what you want about that. That's okay. But if you are going to um, say in the comments that this is not a good idea or whatever, let me know what you would do to um, improve it or what you would do to make it better because I love a good collaboration I don't take it personally when people say that but I would love to hear what they could do better or what have, how they would improve it what is too much what is not enough so let me know in the comments what you thought about this one I'm very eager to hear your feedback thank you for supporting the channel as well and as always everyone be well stay safe look after your friends see you in the next video peace